What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple finally released iOS 12.4 to the public after going through seven long beta stages. So of course in this video we're going to cover all of the new changes and features, the battery life, the performance, and also if you should update to iOS 12.4 or not. And right off the bat I will tell you guys that this update is more important than it seems, especially for older iPhones like the iPhone 5s and the iPhone 6 that I have here that I have installed iOS 12.4 on as well. And just as a side note, Apple did also release watchOS 5.3 and HomePod version 12.4 today, and we'll briefly discuss those near the end of this video. But anyways, let's talk about iOS 12.4 here. So you can see the update came in at various sizes here on my iPhone 8 Plus, it came in at 2.69 gigabytes, but on my iPhone 6 here, it came in at just 843 0.2 megabytes. So the size of the update will vary depending on your device and also which firmware you are coming from. But one thing that I did notice that was interesting is that I had the GM build of iOS 12.4, at least the you know latest beta, the seventh beta of iOS 12.4 here on my iPhone 8 Plus, but the update size was still super, super big. So anyways, let's move on to the build number for iOS 12.4 here. So if we go to the settings general about 12.4, you can see the build number there is 16G7. So it does have a slightly different build number from beta 7 there, which is pretty interesting. So now let's talk about the changes here in iOS 12.4. Like I mentioned, I did install it on my iPhone 8 Plus and my iPhone 6 here. I do also have it on an iPhone 5S installing right now. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos on iOS 12.4, you would know that one of the big reasons for Apple releasing iOS 12.4 was for the Apple card. So this is a big thing, the Apple credit card coming out this summer. This was a big reason Apple was going to be releasing iOS 12.4. 12.4, right? I mean, it just made sense. But the interesting thing is Apple never even mentioned the Apple card in the release notes for iOS 12.4 here. So these are the release notes for iOS 12.4. And you can see there, there is actually no indication or you know, nothing indicating that iOS 12.4 has anything to do with the Apple card. So that's very interesting because all along, like I said, we were led to believe that iOS 12.4 was basically for the Apple card. That was the big reason that this update was even coming out. So this makes me think that iOS 12.4 is basically just laying the framework for the Apple card. And that's gonna mean that implementation for the actual Apple card, like the ability to add it and everything like that, is going to come a little bit later down the road, maybe like an iOS 12.4.1 or something like that. But it's gonna to have to be pretty soon because Apple announced that the credit card is going to be coming in the summer and we're almost in August now, so there really isn't much summer left. So it could really come at any time. It could come tomorrow, it could come today. We really don't know, uh, but the fact that they didn't mention the Apple Card at all in the release notes leads me to believe that this is basically, iOS 12.4 is basically just laying the framework for the Apple Card and that we won't get actual implementation until maybe like iOS 12.4.1. So we'll find out soon enough and I will be getting the Apple Card immediately when it comes out and I will be going into more depth on the Apple credit card when it gets released. So definitely stay tuned for that. So aside from the whole Apple card framework and everything, we do also have some other changes as well. And the first one is actually a really useful new feature and that is improved data migration when you transfer from an old phone to a new iPhone. So you can see there it says, introduces the ability to wirelessly transfer data and migrate directly from an old iPhone to a new iPhone during setup. So Apple is making it seem like this is a brand new feature, but this is something that we've had before. I mean, I've done this, I've shown this in multiple videos here on the channel over the past couple of years, uh, like with the quick setup, but maybe this is a new and improved way of migrating data. So I've not tested this out yet, but I will definitely be testing it out to see if it's much better. Uh, and I will be making a video possibly if it is actually a big difference and makes things a lot easier. And then as you can see there, we do also have some solid improvements to the Apple News application and the whole Apple News Plus subscription service. So we can now make downloaded issues accessible in the My Magazine section, both online and offline. We also have the ability to add all publications in Apple News Plus to the catalog at the top of the News Plus feed. And then finally, we have the ability to clear downloaded magazine issues by selecting History Clear, Clear All. So like I said, just some very minor improvements to the Apple News and the Apple News Plus service over there. So really nothing major at all when it comes to iOS 12.4, aside from the Apple Card framework, and like I mentioned, those additions to the Apple News application. Now, there are also some security fixes in iOS 12.4. If we go ahead and look at the security content of iOS 12.4 here, I know a lot of people like updating just to keep their device as secure as possible and so you're not vulnerable to some of the you know vulnerabilities and bugs existing out there. And if you scroll down, you can see there are quite a few bug fixes here, but really nothing too major that I've noticed. There aren't really too many uh, like kernel exploits or anything like that. There are a lot of WebKit bugs as expected there, uh, but, and we have a wallet bug right here as well. And I will leave 
this link down in the description below if you're curious about all of the security patches here in iOS 12.4. But of course, it is always a good idea to update if you are, you know, wanting to keep your device as secure as possible, which I would assume most of you guys do want to do. So that's another reason to update to iOS 12.4. Now, when it comes to the performance of iOS 12.4, this is where I am most impressed because this software is extremely smooth and stable. Now, unfortunately, I'm only on 30% battery life here on my iPhone 6. So the performance, especially on like the older phones, like the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6, they never perform as good when they're under 50% battery. So you're not going to be able to see it at its full potential. So you're going to have to just download it on your iPhone 5S 6 or 6 plus to see. Uh, but the performance is really good here. I mean, I have not had really any stutters or lag at all. I mean, obviously things take a lot longer to load than what I'm used to because I use the iPhone XS Max, the 10R, the 8 Plus, a lot of these newer phones I use a lot. So I'm used to those fast speeds. But when I use this today, and you know, I've been using it throughout the beta stages as well, but it's definitely faster than iOS 12.3.1. I can notice a, a noticeable difference from 12.3.1 to 12.4 on my iPhone 6. And one of the main differences was unlocking using Touch ID. And I have no clue why that's my background, by the way. If you go ahead and unlock, you can see Touch ID. For some reason, it just feels a lot smoother and a lot faster than it did on iOS 12.3.1. Now, I have also been sticking my SIM card in the iPhone 6 here for a couple of hours, just testing out the cell connectivity and things like that. And I did have cell connectivity issues on iOS 12.3.1 on all my devices, including my daily driver iPhone XS Max, but I've not had any issues with cell connectivity at all in iOS 12.4, and that's likely due to the modem firmware update that we got. So if you did have any issues with LTE, 12.4 should solve most of those. But yeah, performance overall is really solid here on iOS 12.4. You guys know I like doing this little test right here just to see the speed of flipping the camera and things like that. That really gives you an indication of how well the software is optimized and keeps up with really fast moving actions like that going in and out of applications. It's another thing I like testing out. You can see there, everything flows really smooth, especially on such an old phone like the iPhone 6 here. It's actually quite impressive how good and how well optimized iOS 12.4 is. Now, as for the battery life, iOS 12.4 has the best battery life of all of iOS 12 in my experience. I haven't used my iPhone 5S or this iPhone 6 as much as my iPhone 8 Plus here, but when testing all three devices, I never had any kind of issue with battery drain or anything like that. So if you go down to my battery, you can see my battery health is at 94% here on my iPhone 6, and we're at 97% here on my iPhone 8 Plus. So yeah, even though my devices don't have the best battery capacity, I mean, they are older phones, so it's not really bad. Uh, but even with that battery capacity, my battery seems to get me through a good portion of the day. I can't get through a full day with either device, unfortunately, but I don't have to charge near as often as I did in earlier versions of iOS 12. It's not much different than iOS 12.3.1, but it's much different from like iOS 12.2, iOS 12.1.3. I could definitely tell a difference from firmwares like that. But if you're coming from iOS 12.3.1, don't expect a huge change in battery life. Like unless you were having battery drain on iOS 12.3.1, then 12.4 may solve that. Uh, but you're not gonna notice a big difference just coming from 12.3.1 to 12.4. I would say the performance is more noticeable coming from 12.3.1 to 12.4, but I did only notice it on the iPhone 5S and the 6. I didn't notice a big difference on my iPhone 8 Plus here. So yeah, with all that being said, should you update to iOS 12.4? And I would say absolutely, you should update to iOS 12.4, especially if you are on an iPhone 5S or an iPhone 6 like I have right here. I definitely like this update for my iPhone 6 and the performance, the battery life, all of them are as good as it gets for iOS 12. And you also get the added security patches like I mentioned as well, uh, so that your device isn't as vulnerable to bugs and vulnerabilities out there, especially if you're on an older device. Those are usually a lot more vulnerable because they are running older software versions. And like I mentioned earlier, this update could also very well be one of the final software updates for the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6. So that alone should tell you how good this update will be because Apple is so confident in it uh, to, you know, have it standing and have it sitting there for years to come. Now on the flip side, the only reason I would say not to update is if you are into jailbreaking and if you want to jailbreak your device. So obviously, if you do want to jailbreak your device, you should not update, you should stay put on the lowest software version possible, which would be, you know, whatever you're on right now, whatever you're on, just stay there and don't update to iOS 12.4. But again, that's only if you are interested in jailbreaking your device. And since I'm using iOS 13 a lot, going back to iOS 12 is actually pretty nice. I can actually tell how much more stable this release of iOS 12.4 
12.4 is, then of course the iOS 13 betas. It feels really good, really rock solid here. And before I end this video, I do also want to briefly talk about Watch OS 5.3 and also HomePod version 12.4, which were also just released today. Now, if you look at the bottom of these release notes, you can see the fix there for the Apple Watch. So Watch OS 5.3 brings back the walkie talkie feature, which was disabled a while back due to a vulnerability that would allow you to listen in on people, basically just spy on people. Now that vulnerability was never exploited, so nobody was ever affected by it, nobody was spied on, but thankfully that has been patched now in my favorite Apple Watch application. The walkie talkie app is back to working properly. I love that application. And Watch OS 5.3 also brings the ECG application and irregular heart rhythm notifications to Canada and Singapore. And then the HomePod update is a very, very small one that only adds support for the HomePod in Japan and in Taiwan. So yeah, that's pretty much it for what's new in iOS 12.4 and if you should update or not. So let me know what you guys think about iOS 12.4. If you're on an iPhone 5S or an iPhone 6, are you gonna update? Are you currently on the iOS 13 beta if you're on a newer phone? Let me know all your thoughts and comments down there in the comment section below. You guys know I love replying to you down there. And of course, as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and of course, subscribe for a lot more future iOS coverage. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.